Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about unemployment and other labor force statistics. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review Booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into the content. Now before we jump into unemployment, we first have to learn about the labor force. The labor force is the people within an economy that are either unemployed or employed. This is essentially the human resources that the economy has available to produce goods and services. So we don't count children or the retired or people who don't want to work. They are not part of our labor force and are not available to produce goods and services. So what does it mean for a member of the labor force to be considered employed? In addition to being at least 16 years old, one of the following must be true for the person within the last week. First, they could have worked for pay or profit for one or more hours but they could work without pay or profit if they have worked for at least 15 hours in a family-owned business. Or they could also have a job but didn't actually work for pay or profit because they were on vacation. Now the other half of the labor force is the people who are unemployed. What does it mean to be unemployed? Well, an unemployed person means they are not working and they are actively looking for work. So people who are not working but not looking for work they are not considered unemployed and they are actually not part of our labor force. When it comes to calculating the unemployment rate, we are first going to take the number of unemployed people, divide that by the entire labor force and times that by 100. Remember the labor force is both the employed people and the unemployed people added together. So if we have an economy with 95,000 people who are employed and 5,000 people who are unemployed, we can plug in the numbers and do the math to calculate the unemployment rate within this country. Let's take the 5,000 unemployed people and divide that by the labor force as a whole. That's the 95,000 people who are employed plus the 5,000 people who are unemployed. So you'll take that 5,000 divided by 100,000 times it by 100 and that gives us 5% unemployment within this country. You could also be asked to calculate the labor force participation rate on your exam. To find the labor force participation rate, you're going to take the number of people within the labor force and divide it by the entire civilian population, then times it by 100. And once again, the labor force is the employed and unemployed people added together. So if we look at that table again, this time adding in the civilian population, we can calculate the labor force participation rate within this country. We have our labor force of 100,000 people and then divide that by the 250,000 people within the entire population. Times that by 100 and that gives us a 40% labor force participation rate in this country. So next we're going to talk about different types of unemployment. The first type of unemployment is called frictional unemployment. Frictional unemployment occurs when people are in between jobs. So if you quit your job at the coffee shop in order to look for a factory job, during the time that it takes for you to find that new job, you are frictionally unemployed. A little side note, frictional unemployment also includes people who are finding their first job. So when you graduate from college and you're looking for that first job, during that time you are facing frictional unemployment. Our second type of unemployment is called structural unemployment. Structural unemployment exists because there are changes within an economy, and those changes within the economy lead to a skills mismatch. When Blu-ray disc players first came out, they were very expensive, and people had jobs fixing those Blu-ray disc players. But now that they are so cheap, those jobs have been eliminated, and the people who used to make good money repairing Blu-ray disc players now have to go back and learn new skills in order to find equally high-paying jobs. Now, frictional unemployment and structural unemployment are totally natural within a healthy economy. We are always going to have people leaving jobs they don't like or being fired from jobs that don't like them, and people are going to be unemployed while they are trying to find that first job. Our economy also changes in the long run. Some jobs become obsolete or automation occurs where robots are now doing jobs that people used to do before, and those changes within the economy are normal and to be expected. But we have a third type of unemployment that we want to avoid, and that is called cyclical unemployment. Cyclical unemployment occurs because there is an overall downturn in the economy. It's usually caused because consumers have stopped spending money. Now you'll learn about the business cycle in a future video, and in that video you will learn that when our actual gross domestic product falls below our potential long-run gross domestic product, we will have cyclical unemployment. And since cyclical unemployment is characterized by a downturn in the overall economy, on your exam you may see a term that refers to the natural rate of unemployment. The natural rate of unemployment is the unemployment rate we have when the economy is healthy. It's often referred to as the NRU. The natural rate of unemployment is the frictional unemployment and the structural unemployment added together. So if we have 2% frictional unemployment and 3% structural unemployment, the natural rate of unemployment will be 5%. And anytime our natural rate of unemployment is above that 5%, the rest will be cyclical unemployment. 
The natural rate of unemployment also occurs when we have zero cyclical unemployment. So if our current rate of unemployment is 9% and the cyclical unemployment is 4%, do the math and you will find we again have a 5% natural rate of unemployment. And when the economy is producing the amount of GDP that is equal to our potential long run GDP, then the actual rate of unemployment will equal the natural rate of unemployment. In fact, the natural rate of unemployment is the unemployment rate that an economy is expected to have in the long run. Now the unemployment rate is often used to determine what's going on in the labor market, but it doesn't always give us an accurate picture of what's going on. The first reason why the unemployment rate doesn't always give us a full picture is because of discouraged workers. Discouraged workers are people that don't have a job, but they want to work and they're available to work, but they aren't currently looking. As a result of them not looking for work, they are not part of the labor force. And when unemployed workers become discouraged workers, our unemployment rate falls, making it look like the labor market has gotten better, when in fact, it has not. The second problem we have with the unemployment rate is underemployed workers. Underemployed workers are workers who have part-time work, but are looking for and want full-time work. And these part-time workers are counted the same way as full-time workers are counted. So whether you work a one hour job each week or a 40 hour job each week, in both instances, you are counted as employed. So when unemployed workers find part-time work, even though they're looking for full-time work, the unemployment rate falls and it looks like things are much better in the labor market when maybe they've only gotten a little better. And the last issue with the unemployment rate is the labor force participation rate. Sometimes when people leave the labor force because they've stopped looking for work, the unemployment rate is going to fall and it looks like things have gotten much better in the labor market. But in reality, our labor force has shrunk. And as a result, the unemployment rate has fallen when people haven't found new jobs. The unemployment rate that you see in the newspaper is referred to as the U3 unemployment rate. Now, I've never seen the U3 term on the exam, but it is the name of the official rate. And in February of 2023, the official unemployment rate, U3, was 3.6% unemployment in the United States. But this official unemployment rate may underestimate the problems in the labor market for the reasons I just outlined. And that's why some economists like to look at other measures instead. The U6 unemployment rate, some people call it the true unemployment rate, counts discouraged workers as unemployed as well as underemployed workers as unemployed. And that's going to increase the unemployment rate from the official U3 measure. In February of 2023, the U6 unemployment rate was 6.8% within the United States. And there you have it. That is what you need to know about the unemployment rate and other labor force statistics. If you're ready to practice calculating labor force statistics, head over to reviewecon.com and play the labor force statistics game. And if you still need more help after that, pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.